Math Counts is the most prestigious and fun middle school math competition in the US. How do you prepare for Math Counts? This video is your ultimate study guide for Math Counts, which will take you all the way from the school level to the nationals level. So Math Counts has four levels of competition. The school level, which you take at your school, and then you advance to the chapter level if you do well, and then from there you advance to the state level, and from the state level, the top four from every state qualify for the national competition. And the national competition is an amazing experience. By the way, if you're interested, I can share my experience at the national competition last year. If you're interested, leave a comment down below. So who can take math counts? The competition is for middle schoolers and not elementary schoolers and high schoolers. So only people from grades six to eight. And your school has to register for this contest. But if you're not a if you're not part of the school or your school does not offer math counts, you can register as a NSC, a non-school competitor. So even if you if your school does not do math counts, you can still take math counts. Just make sure to register as a NSC. So each school can register maximum of one team with four people and eight individuals. So 12 total students from each school at the most can go to the chapter competition. And then there's different rules for qualifying to the state level. And then from the state level, top four from every state make the national competition. And it, it's a really great experience, as I mentioned earlier. So Math Counts competition is divided amongst four different rounds. So there's Sprint, Target, Team, and the Countdown Round. So Sprint Round. Sprint Round is an individual round, 30 short answer questions. All, all the rounds in Math Counts are short answer. There's no multiple choice. So sprint round is an individual round, 30 short answer questions, which you have 40 minutes to answer. And this remains constant amongst all four levels, even though the tests at the state and national level are much harder than school and chapter level, the amount of time is still the same. So speed is really a factor here, as I'll mention later. Then there's a target round. This is also an individual round. There's four sets of two questions, and for each two pair of two questions, you have six minutes. And in this round, you're allowed to use calculators, specifically any calculator, including graphing calculators, as long as it's not QWERTY, as long as it does not have a QWERTY keyboard is allowed. And then there's the team round. So the team round is 20 questions in 10 minutes. And the entire team of four will work on this together. And calculators are allowed for this round as well. And then this is the most fun round, in my opinion. There's the countdown round. And the countdown round is like a fast paced, fun buzzing competition. And rather than, rather than explaining much, let me show you a quick video. The next question of our finals. And that next question is, in a barn, 100 chicks sit peacefully in a circle. So, Luke. 25. 25 is the correct answer. Wow, wasn't that amazing? Well, to reach that level takes a lot of practice. So here's how to do well on the Math Counts contest. The first step is understanding all the content. These contests go much beyond the school curriculum, so there's going to be a lot of new mathematical concepts to learn, which are very interesting, that are not covered. And these are some new things that will be useful in Math Counts and other math competitions as well. The second thing is you need to do a lot of practice problems to improve your problem-solving intuition. See, math competition problems are really cool because they're not a direct application of a theorem or formula or method. They, have to, they involve unique and creative thinking and applying methods in unique and creative ways to solve problems. These require a lot of practice to get better at, so you should definitely need to practice problems in specific concepts to improve your problem-solving intuition. Three is increase speed and accuracy. So especially the sprint round, it requires a lot of speed. 30 questions, which are not that easy, to be solved in 40 minutes. Most students will have trouble finishing these questions or even attempting 20 or 25. So it's, it's definitely important to improve your problem solving speed to do well in this contest. And also, accuracy is important. Accuracy, because if you make silly mistakes, then you're missing out on points that you would have lost out on otherwise. And being able to do questions fast and accurately is a skill that's extremely important for math counts. So how can you do all these things? So let's start off with the first, first point, learning concepts. There's many new concepts and applying them, which requires practice problems. 
How can you do this? Well, there's many great resources. The first one is the MathCount School Handbook. There's a new school handbook every year, and you can find some more school handbooks in the MathCount store. And these handbooks basically cover many different cool concepts and program problems and are great for beginners who are starting off at the school level. Next off, we have MathCount's Minis. Math Counts Minis are a bunch of videos and handouts to go along with those videos for different concepts explained by Richard Ruzick. And they're really great for learning different concepts because they're, they're really nice and short and there's many practice problems to go along with it in the handout. So that's another great resource. Next off, we have the AMC8 Fundamentals course. So over here, we have the AMC8 Fundamentals course, which is a free 10 week course covering some of the most important concepts for the AMC8, but it also helps and covers most of the important concepts for math counts as well. And now this is a slightly more advanced one, but there's the AMC8 advanced in math counts class, and these are expanding on the, those original 10 class series with some more advanced concepts. And then finally, we have the, the Mastering AMC8 book. Now, this although it's Mastering AMC8, it's ex still extremely helpful for math counts, as most of the concepts between AMC8 and math counts are the same. And there's many practice problems many of which are for math counts as well, and AMC8 that you can find in this book. Okay, now we're gonna move on to practice tests. So now we covered the ways to learn concepts, but you also have to do practice tests and practice problems to narrow down your speed, accuracy, and get the rhythm right. So first of all, we have the free past competitions on the math counts website. So you can find all the school, chapter, and state competitions from the previous year for free on the Math Counts website. Next, we have these books by Math Counts. There's practice competitions for Math Counts Volume 1 and Volume 2. And these are practice tests written by Math Counts that basically help, that are good for practicing your speed accuracy and learning, maybe learning new concepts you had not yet learned yet. And that's the important thing to improve speed and accuracy. And then these are electronic countdown rounds. So, Countdown, as I said, is one of the key rounds, and we saw a clip of it earlier. Reaching that level where you can solve questions like that within seconds or even less than a second, it's not easy, and it requires a lot of practice. And one of the ways to practice are with these electronic countdown rounds you can find on this website. I'll also mention FDW for the win later on, which is also good for countdown practice. And by the way, when, when you're doing this test, I highly recommend you Whatever you can finish in the time limit, let's say for sprint, 40 minutes, you can do maybe 20, let's say 20 questions. Now, you should still attempt those remaining 10 questions and try to solve them. And if you can't solve them, you should try and learn from the solutions and solve, try and solve it for yourself. Another thing is for the mistakes you make. It's very likely that you'll be making some silly mistakes from time to time. And you shouldn't just brush it off saying, oh, it was just a silly mistake. You should analyze your silly mistake and see, okay, why did I make this mistake? And what am I going to do so this never this mistake never happens again? Okay, so next off we have my math counts books. Now these this is another organization. It's not official math counts, but they have some books for preparing. But these books they often have many typos and other things. So I would recommend you prioritize the other books over the, these ones. But you can check these out too if you have more time. Okay, now we're going to move on to some of the more advanced resources. Starting off, we have Volume 1. Now, this is a book that's targeted towards some basic high school competition math as well. So it's a little bit more on the advanced side. But it's definitely going to be useful if you're preparing for the state or nationals level. And next off, we have the Art of Problem Solving Introduction to Algebra book. This book is really comprehensive on algebra, and it's good for these competition math style problems you won't find in school. And then there's also the other parts of the intermediate se introduction series, introduction to number theory, counting and probability, and geometry. And these are super comprehensive books explaining each subject in detail. And they're really long, but they're going to make your understanding of these concepts very good. But these are advanced, so more for the state and national level. But so you'll definitely want to check those out. And some more advanced resources. The most challenging math counts problems solved. This is basically the national competitions from 2000 to 2001 to 2010, and it has the national competitions and solutions. And these problems, especially to solve in 40 minutes for sprint and just six minutes for two questions in target, they're not easy at all. And 
So even solving the problems with any amount of time is not easy. And within that tiny time limit, it takes a lot of practice and effort to reach that level. And there's volume two, which is the more recent years from 2011 to 20, from 2011 to 2020, which is the most recent years, it's volume two of the most math counts problems, the hardest math counts problems solved. And then we've got the greatest math counts problems books. And these are the collection of the most nice and interesting problems. Okay, next off, we have the three year math counts marathon. Now this is an extremely advanced book, especially for math counts. Many of the problems are Amy or even higher level, even reaching some early Olympiad level stuff. So this is, I really only recommend it for really advanced day or national preparation. But if you're really looking to make that last jump at the high level, this is a great book and it's going to make your understanding of solve hard problems at the state and national level very solid. And as you can check out over here, they're even showing a really advanced technique, 3D math points. So this is, this is a really good book for advanced students. Okay, now we've got Alchemist over here. Alchemist is a great resource for practicing problems from specific topics. So you can go like click play here and then I can just choose a topic. So I can just go, okay, maybe I wanna do counting probability. Maybe let's do using expected value. And then I just click set focus. And it will give me a bunch of problems that I can practice with. And you can use those to, for practice specific concept areas. And it's good for especially targeting your weak concepts. And next off, we've got Math Counts Trainer. Now this is really cool because Math Counts Trainer, it gives you official past Math Counts problems for you to solve. And in these official past Math Counts problems, you judge based on your speed and accuracy. And your rating will increase or decrease based on how you're doing. And it's great for practicing accuracy especially, but it's also good for, you can also use it to practice speed. And for countdown practice, you can try going as quickly as possible. I did it in a math count speed math run video previously on my channel. And finally, we've got FDW. Now FDW is a great website to practice countdown and it's really fun and amazing way to improve speed and accuracy. The one thing I do recommend though, is if you're using FDW, you try not, you try not to compromise on accuracy too much. So you shouldn't be trying to go too fast to the point where you're, where you're making way too many mistakes. And also you should re review the problems after you're done. There's a review thing after, so you should definitely check that out. So those are all the resources. And by using these resources and practicing regularly, you can improve your skills and potentially do well, very well on the math counts competition. Good luck. And I hope you found this video useful.